What up guys, thank you once again for joining us for part number seven of our leadership teaching as we walk through the book, Learning to Lead Like Jesus. Um, so if you haven't had this book already, gotten this book, we're going to be in chapter number seven. Uh, this is a great book that, that it uses examples, real life examples of how to lead like Jesus would lead. Using examples from the Bible, watching how Jesus led in particular situations or um, the way his character came out. Um, in his leadership. And so today we are going to be uh, talking about chapter number seven, which is learning to lead like Jesus with gratitude. Like always, we're going to jump into a, a verse to kick it off and then a quote by J.K. or uh, G.K. Chesterton. And so we're going to read from Jonah chapter two, verse number nine. I will never worship anyone but you, for how can I thank you enough for all you have done. I will surely fulfill my promises, for my deliverance comes from the Lord alone. And then our quote states this, I would maintain that thanks are the highest form of thought, and that gratitude is happiness doubled by wonder. So we're going to be talking about gratitude, talking, talking about thanksgiving, talking about being thankful. And so what are some examples that we have in the Bible of Jesus being thankful, or of G Jesus giving thanks um, the first example we have is when Jesus raises um, uh, Lazarus from the dead. He prays for Lazarus. It says this right here. They took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And that is in John chapter 11, uh, verse 41. And so Jesus was quick to thank his father for his answered prayer when his good friend Lazarus was brought back to life. And so Christ's gratitude gave glory to God in that situation. Example number two, when the feeding of the 5,000, it says in John 6, 11, Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. And that is John chapter 6, verse number 11. And so, he, and so Jesus also gave thanks for the Lord's incredible provision when he fed the 5,000. To give thanks to his Father was his honorable response to the provision that God provided for him. And so that is the examples that we have. That, well, there's so many other more examples, but that's the examples of, uh, or just a few examples of Jesus being thankful in his leadership um, towards God. So we're going to jump into this next little section as we just walk through this chapter. Um, and this is talking about giving God praise through your pain, no matter what you've been going through, um, and realizing that God is in control of, of your life. And, and this is, this is I love what it says right here. In the darkest hour, we can choose to sing with thankful adoration to our almighty God. Grateful praise cuts into a lonely soul embedding hope. With uh, sur 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 surgeon-like precision, precision, salvation in Jesus removes our deadly tumor of sin and sets free faith's life-giving blood. As anxiety knocks at our, at our heart's door, we drown out its noise by immersing ourselves in praise music. And so in Psalms 95, 2, it says, Let us come before Him with thanksgiving, and extol him with music and with song. And so, man, when you're going through something, when you're struggling with um, something in your life, a pain, an issue, man, one of the greatest ways that you can walk through that and be thankful in that season, even when it doesn't feel like it, is through praise, is through worship, is through getting in your prayer closet, putting some worship music on and, and, and singing your heart out. And you begin to feel the peace, you begin to feel the joy that just becomes over you as you lift up a praise to God who is in heaven. A point to ponder gratitude and praise to Christ remind us of the reality of God's control in our lives. Do you believe that? Um, and then also in Psalms 147.7 states this, Sing our uh, wisdom and leadership overcomes pain with present praise. All right, and then the and then the scripture says, "Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp." And so it is biblical to worship. It is biblical to sing a praise. It is biblical to use an instrument and play uh, skillfully towards God. And I, I love that. The takeaway from that is is grateful leaders look to the Lord often with with uh, heartfelt praise. 
and thanksgiving. Continue to walk through right through this chapter. Uh, great, grateful faith is evidence of a life healed by God. And so when God touches you, when, when you are healed by God, you have evidence in your life of the faith that you believe. In Luke 17, 18 through 19, it says, what Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. And so remember the story of the ten lepers who were healed by Jesus um, and only one of those ten lepers actually came back to him and gave Jesus thanks for the healing. Um, and so it seems even today, only 10% of the population takes the time to return to the blesser, which is God, and thank him for the blessings that he's poured out over your life. So think about it. When was the last time you as a leader, you as a even just a follower of Jesus gave thanks to God, came back to the person that walked you through the situation that you may have been going through and the one that sets you free, the one that gave you peace and rest. When was the last time you came back and you received um, you, you received healing and then you gave thanks. You, you gave praise to God. You were, one, you were that one, t uh, one leper out of the ten that came back and uh, gave thanks to Jesus. So great, grateful faith gets to the heart of the matter. It uh, engages God's heart and it heals your own heart. And so Christ knew that, going back to the ten uh, lepers, Christ knew their physical healing was an opportunity for them to experience God. That is so powerful right there, to experience God, the healing, the, the, the touch from God. They experienced Him in a way that they never have experienced Him before. Um, so those, um, and, and continue to walk through that, why did, he, why did he come back? Why did that one leper come back? Those who hurt the most are able to experience a deeper work of grace that compels them to praise God. And so, man, people that are hurt, the hurt, ones that are, are, are so deep into, into whatever they're in, one that may have been more sick than the other, when they get set free from that, they, they know it's from God. When they get healed from that by Jesus... They want to come back and they want to give so much thanks. They want to give so much praise because they were delivered from a lot more than maybe somebody else was delivered. They were, their thankfulness level was so high from what they were set free from. And Isaiah 21 or 25 1 says this, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name for in perfect faithfulness you have done wonderful things. Things planned long ago in Isaiah 25 Verse number one, a point to ponder on that is, is grateful uh, faith leads to ongoing healing of a broken life. And so the Lord's wholeness in your life gives you the capacity to love and thank others. You are blessed to be a blessing. Be a blessing. You didn't just get blessed so that you can just go and, and live your life and not bless anybody else or pass on the blessing. It's kind of like <laughs> at the restaurant's. Or a fast food restaurant when you pay for somebody's food behind you, or or somebody pays for the food pays for your food that is in front of you. you, you would you most people when they when that happens to them, well they're going to pay for the person behind them and and they just begin to chain react all throughout the line of the fast food restaurant. Don't be the person that doesn't pay for the one behind them, and that and it stops that that chain. It stops that chain reaction of of something good is happening. And so when you are blessed, be a blessing to others. You are forgiven to forgive. You see, you see where I'm going? You are accepted to accept others. Your grateful faith qualifies you for wholeness and holiness. That is so powerful. Um, Colossians 1.12 says this, Giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of His holy people in the kingdom of light. Um, the takeaway from that, grateful leaders have a pattern of ongoing thankfulness to God and to people. We're going we're gonna to go through right here, continue to walk through this, this chapter, and we're going to land right here in grateful leaders work for the Lord. And so when you are grateful, when you, and, and this is, this is going to be our last point right here of this chapter, I, I love this, I love this, this, this little section um, it's so powerful. Grateful leaders work for the Lord. Let's read in Colossians 3, 23-24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, 
as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Um, and so work is one of the best places to model an attitude of gratitude. An attitude of gratitude. Um, you know, like even, even do, you, do your coworkers like to see you coming because of your thankful heart? Or do they avoid you because of your demanding disposition? You know, I think about my life as, as, as um, you know, the things that I was set free from, the, the, bondage that is, but the bondages that I was set free from. You know why I'm so all in on God? You know, the, the reason that I'm all in on whatever He has for me, not just youth ministry, not just this moment that I'm in, but for the rest of my life. When I, when I felt God, the moment that He called me into ministry, the moment that I was saved and, and filled with the Holy Spirit, I dedicated my life to serve God. Why? Because I, there's no way that, that, that there's anything else that I could do that would show my thankfulness to God. Nothing. There's not anything that I could do on this earth that could truly show the thankfulness of God. Even serving a life of ministry still wouldn't be enough to show the thankfulness of God. But I can serve God for the rest of my life. I can work hard. It, it, whether that's in a secular God, job. I ain't saying you got to be called into ministry. you got to be an evangelist or a missionary. I'm talking about in an everyday life, in a um, secular job, are you going to serve God there? Are you going to touch the people that need to be touched there? Your co-workers, the, the people you're around each and every day because of what God has done in your life. To being thankful to God because he sets you free from something. John 6, 27 says this. Do not work for, good, work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. A point to ponder. Gladness bubbles out, uh, out, uh, over, over, it overflows from the heart of those who work for God. Um, and so as you work for God, your joy will come out, your peace will come out, the gladness will begin to overflow in your life. Um, and I want to read this to you and then we'll be done or we'll close with the scripture and then we'll be done with, with leadership um, part number seven. What is the motivation behind your work? Are you just working for a paycheck to put food on the table, furniture in the house, gas in the car, children in the school, and eventually to fund a retirement to spend on yourself? If this is your small self-focus perspective, there is a much larger and more uh, fulfilling vision out there for you to embrace. The Lord Jesus Christ is the owner of all commerce and e economic development. God is the charge of job or God is in charge of job placement, promotions, and career advancement. The Holy Spirit moves the hearts of uh, decision makers to make choices that align with the Lord's will. So work for the Lord's eternal ways. And then Isaiah 55, 2. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fair. And so that concludes chapter number seven of learning to lead like Jesus with gratitude. Thank you so much. And we will be posting uh, chapter number eight next week.